From Creation Ministries International, you're listening to Creation.com's article podcast. The research and insights that give God the glory, refutes evolution, and gives you the answers to defend your faith. I'm Joseph Darnell. Anti-creationism is becoming increasingly organized and shrewd. The main U.S. pressure group, the so-called National Center for Science and Education, or NCSE, regularly advises subscribers to its journal on how to defeat local creationist initiatives. And yet, its chief spokesperson, Dr. Eugenie Scott, has urged her constituency to promote the idea that evolution is not anti-God or anti-religion. A self-confessed atheist and winner of humanist awards, Scott's advice is openly politico-strategic. Since she reasons most Americans are religious and believe in God, convince them that evolution and religion can coexist and they won't support creationist efforts. To the staunchly anti-God propagandists of evolution, compromising Christians are, in Lenin's phrase, useful idiots who have missed the real meaning of evolution. When someone asks you if God could have used evolution, the answer really depends upon what they mean by what they call God. If we are not talking about the God of the Bible, but about some abstract idea of an all-powerful being, a lowercase God, well, they can, by definition, do anything at all, including creating through apparent chance. Genetic errors, filtered by whatever environment happened to be there, might only seem to be random. Of course, if chance really were capable of creating this amazingly complex world, it would make the God postulate unnecessary even foolish. Most notions of a little g-god are mental constructs designed to fit what one would like to believe. Since invented deities are limited only by imagination, why couldn't he or she or it, or maybe a three-horned cosmic cow, have used evolution? But the Christian god is not any old god. He is the one true living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the triune God, both infinite and personal. The I am that I am, as it says in Exodus 3.14, and the word made flesh, read John 1.14. So while imaginary gods could do anything, the true God cannot lie nor deceive us about origins. He tells us via specific historical account of his creation of a good world in six earth rotation days, ruined by sin and still to be restored to a sinless, deathless condition. It is hard to imagine anything more antagonistic to the story of long ages of death and suffering before man. Yet this long ages story is, sadly, promoted by many otherwise sound evangelical leaders who simultaneously display their anti-evolution credentials. So, could God have used evolution? It depends. For the true God, the answer is no, for he cannot lie, and he told us plainly what he did. Now, are you ready to get the answer to the question, is evolution anti-religion? That's coming up after the break. You know, I love listening to podcasts, and if you made it this far into this episode, there's a good chance that you do too. I listen to shows of all sorts of topics, but I never let a good listen get in the way of a good read, where some of the best insights and knowledge are to be had. I make the point to read a lot, and that's why I'm glad that I can honestly tell you that CMI publishes one of my favorite knowledge sources, Creation Magazine. In four issues a year, our print magazine addresses the most interesting and perplexing creation subjects for every reader in the family. Our team of scientists and experts deliver accurate and current information that gives answer to evolutionary arguments and defends your faith. It makes a great evangelism tool for young people too, so you'll always have something to discuss among your peers. The printed magazine's shipping is free. But you say, Joseph, I don't read printed magazines. What year do you think this is? Okay, well, you can give your printed copy to someone who will appreciate it, because the digital edition can be shared on up to five of your household devices, and you'll also have access to back issues. Now, seriously, Creation Magazine is one of the singularly most biblical and scientific publications today, so why not take advantage of it now? 
Sign up for it today at creation.com slash magazines. Back to the question. Is evolution anti-religion? Here again, it depends. Most religions, including liberal distortions of Christianity, are man-made concepts. Most are either compatible with or flow from evolutionary notions. They concern man's imaginings on about how to reach or please a made-up God. But the gospel is about God reaching down to an utterly lost humanity. God the Son became the obedient last Adam. 1 Corinthians 15.45 reads, Thus it is written, The first man Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Jesus did this by shedding his blood in death, so overcoming the curse of death and bloodshed introduced by the disobedience of the first Adam. Undermine Genesis, an essential part of biblical authority, and the only thing left is religion, an empty, lifeless shell. So evolution is not inherently anti-religion, but most certainly is opposed to biblical Christianity. Eugenie Scott and cohorts currently expend much energy on political struggles against all shades of creationism, including intelligent design long-agers, progressive creationists, and the like. On such battlegrounds, she has a chance of selling her evolution won't mess up your religion message. And for the vaguely God-believing, it's probably true. Meanwhile, Creation Ministries International invites your help to keep moving ahead on the real spiritual battlefield. The true gospel versus all man-made religion, including evolution's neo-pagan claims to usurp God's glory in creation. The Creation.com article podcast is hosted by me, Joseph Darnell, and produced out of the U.S. studio of Creation Ministries International. Learn more about our ministry at creation.com, this episode's article was written by Dr. Carl Wieland. Our scientists who speak on the road are teaching in churches once again. Get in touch if you want to arrange for one of our expert creationist speakers to visit your church. Our writers and scientists host a really cool talk show called Creation.com Talk, which you can find right here in your podcast app and on YouTube. If you'd like to help us, become a monthly supporter making a donation at creation.com donate. You can also help out by telling friends to check out Creation Magazine. Be sure to follow Creation Ministries International on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to our free e-newsletter. From everyone at creation.com, thanks for listening. Thank you.